YouTube channel. My name is Steve, and I'm making this video because a few people were asking questions, or at least one guy in general, about the high, and how the high and the low bytes work in the semi language. Uh, to break that down, I created a little simple word document. I'm going to kind of read it through here, and hopefully you can see it here. Um, I'm going to enlarge the screen here a little bit for those people who may have a mobile phone. I'm just going to show you this for a second. Okay, so keep in mind on your Commodore 64, every um, every um, computer from the Atari to Commodore 64 to the Apple to the Tandy, you know, all the 8-bit systems, Coco 3 computer, all of those have stored what are called memory addresses inside of your computer. Now, keep in mind there are a possible 65, 535 possible memory addresses, assuming I got that number correct. They range from 0 to 65, 535. And I'll show you an example of this in a minute. And number two, a memory address serves as a switch in your computer to trigger events such as color change, sprites, disk activity. Uh, there's, there's so many different examples that you could really go into on that. Raster interrupts and just whatever you decide for your computer, even your basic and everything, it's all stored down in actual events. And each memory location contains exactly 255 bytes. And if you look at the example below, I kind of broke it down here for you. I'm going to zoom in a little bit more here. So you can see it. Hopefully you can see that there. So I'll put it in the center and make it better. Um, poke 53280,2. 53280, the first number you hear you're seeing, this is what's called a memory address. That's what I read, about, get read up here earlier to you. So keep in mind the first set of the first parameter is the memory address. The second is called the byte, and that's where you're going to store the information into the computer's memory. Oops, too big. Okay, and the next step is here when you enter a number, you're actually you're activating that bit or byte in the 6510's memory. In the example above, we changed the border to red. So this is basically storing the screen address which is found in your Mapping the Commodore 64 book. And I'm going to zoom out here for a minute to show you guys the book here for a second. I'm going to have to move my camera because that's actually where everything's sitting at. So. Okay, so this right here is the, the Mapping the Commodore 64 book that you want to get. And it's for the Commodore 64 if you want to kind of see it there. You can get a, a demo PDF online. And inside of here, it's got all the memory addresses and everything that you would want to look up your computer to figure out what that memory address does in your computer. I mean, there are so many things you can play with. I recommend uh, starting at 53248 and kind of working your way through because that's where the sprites are stored at and all that. And it gets up into the audio and everything else which is another thing your, your computer stores as uh, sound inside of it, deep inside of its memory. Okay, so the next step here um, is understanding, since this was the question or the goal of this video, is understanding how high and low bytes work. But first I had to explain the memory addresses or you wouldn't understand the rest part. So hopefully this makes more sense to you now. Keep in mind memory address byte, and if you can keep those in mind, we're going to be storing information basically in here. We're not really going to change this, we're going to be changing these these values in here. But we are going to be altering the calculations, which I'll show you down here later how that works. Anyways, the next thing here is um, from the example above, hopefully you can see, actually, I had an example here, but it's actually below. See how memories are arranged on your comments, so keep in mind each byte can only be as high as 255, and I kind of mentioned that up here at the beginning, I was just reiterating that. So in order to access the next highest bit, we use what is known as the carry flag, this is also referred to as the high byte. So as an example, if you want to calculate a number higher than 255, let's say 1024, since as I mentioned in earlier, the memory address, that's where the screen memory resides on your Commodore 64. So if you look up in this book right here, and you look up 1024, you'll find the screen memory starting area on your Commodore 64 screen. And then uh, we need to add the high byte to the low byte and use a little math. Now if you look at the example below, for those who want to understand, Here's how it's broken down. This first number is the low byte, and you would calculate any number. Each of these is going to have 255. Neither one of these can be above 255. This would be up to 255, and this is 255. But this is how it's calculated to figure out the next highest number. 
you basically take these two numbers plus this number and you calculate it. Now if you want to see it from a calculator standpoint, I can show you that too. I notice I just closed my calculator. The easiest way to go in your calculator is just to take the second byte, um, 208, multiply it by 256, and then all you do is you add the low byte to it, and you get the answer. So that's basically how it works. So I'll show you another example here, since I have this one memorized. Um, 220 times 256 is the joystick, and plus zero, that's the joystick memory location. So there's kind of an example of how that works. Now let's see a simple assembly language example. We would use memory locations 251 and 252 as a place to store a high and low bytes since these locations are unused by BASIC. In this example here, I demonstrated some code, but I actually created a demo here. And to make speed up some time, because I know my audio will cut out after a while here, I created a little demo here I wanted to show you. It's, it's already ran, so you can kind of already see what's happening here. So let me just um, change one of the values here. I know that's going to be yellow. So I can show you what will happen when we run the program. So the way this works, remember earlier when it, I was showing you the high and the low bytes. So this right here, if you look over here, I created an example here to show you. You can use registers 251 and 252 to store the high and the low byte. Remember, this is the low byte. I forgot how to do that. Low byte. And then this would be the high byte. Like that. So that's how you store the high and the low bytes inside of your computer's memory. So we're using registers 251 and 252, since as I repeated up here somewhere earlier, I believe that these are unused by BASIC. So they're safe to use them, but you always use this for the low, and then you use this for the high. And just remember this formula above, and you should never really go wrong. Hopefully that makes sense to you guys. That's how it's calculated. Now this uh, semi-language example, or machine language example I created, is using the same example from our demo here. 32 plus 208 equals 256, and I'm just going to print this to the screen once I, I run this to show you what it does. But basically, you can see right here, the store in the high and low bytes. So this is storing together, both of these together make up 53,280. And then what we're going to do is we're going to create a loop. A loop is necessary so we can go from the low byte to the high byte by incrementing through it. So this is going to be the low byte. And that's what this is represented here. This one is represented in the low byte in the computer's memory. This Y register is represented in the high byte. So if you can think of this as 251 and this is 252, that might make more sense. And then I changed the 7 here because earlier I changed it to red, the border. So remember this location earlier that we calculated up here, 50 through 280? This stores the screen border, the color of your border. And you'll see this change when I run the program. And then what we do is we decrement through the Y register since we're setting it as a Y register so we can loop through the first part of 251 so that 251 will increase. So this, well actually the, excuse me, this one will increase because I have this set to zero. But this second number will increase. So this LDA 208, that's 252 here, will increase based on this value right here, increment 252. This will increase to 209. And earlier it locked up on me because I tried to poke it into memory so I did it backward, but I'll show you. This is how you basically calculate the high. Remember this section right here from the LP1? This is doing the low, and then once you're done with the low, we gotta get the high so we can get the next part of the calculation. So let me run it, because I think I'm probably dead here. And your system 49152, and if I didn't crash it, it should change the border color. Um, oh, I forgot to put it in the code, my bad. I, what you change up here, you always wanna change in code. I left it up here, so I gotta change it here in the data statement, so. Let's do that again. And what happened here? We got a load of thirty-two two eight. And I make sure I duplicated everything down here because anything duplicated up here, I I didn't change this, so I never really figured out where it was going. I don't think. And I gotta make sure these data statements match, so let me just double check them real quick. 32, this is <coughs> 162, this is 1, this is 0, this is uh, 7, so this would change actually to 7 down here. And then this is uh, store the border color, decrement through it, 
get to the next position, increment 252, decrement the X register, and that's the 253. So hopefully it'll work this time. But if not, I'll show you how it calculates anyway. So the system 49152, there it worked that time. So it changed the border color because we stuck in yellow there. Now if you type 251, peek into it, and you just use a comma, peak 252, remember these are the high and the low bytes, you can see that the second value increased based on this, this line right here where it says increment 252, because this increased whatever was found in 252, which we know earlier up here, we stored 208 in it, so now it has a 209 in it. So if we try to calculate these, you, you can do the calculation like this, 32 plus 209 times 256, it's a pretty strange memory location. I think that's in ROM somewhere, so I'm not going to run it as an example. But that just gives you an idea of how the computer's memory works. So I hope this example was pretty helpful to people. Maybe I'll create another example, but I've got to cut this one short because I think the video's probably cut up already. But thanks for watching, guys, and subscribe if you like this.